Mind Thief is a damage dealing controller able to modify her attacks with extra damage or effects as well as inflict controlling statuses like disarm and stun on a fairly regular basis. In this sixth video in the Gloomhaven Starter Guide series, we'll take a closer look at the Mind Thief and the class's playstyle, along with going into detail with each level 1 card, and then we'll get into some recommendations for starting items. So, to start us off, the Mind Thief can be a very powerful character, dealing high damage at level 1 and preventing enemy turns through control effects. The downside is that the Mind Thief is squishy with only 6 starting health and a hand size of 10, but is built to be a melee fighter for the most part. This means we have to use careful planning with our initiatives and actions to avoid as much damage as possible. This will be easier done in larger parties, though it is still possible even in a party of two. Thankfully, as mentioned, we can disarm and stun enemies to keep them from attacking us, and we have a pretty good mix of both early and late initiative values to allow us to go after monsters on one turn and before them on the next. We can even control monsters in some cases and have the ability to go invisible multiple times during a scenario. The Mind Thief's unique mechanic is its Augments. These are ability cards that, when played, modify all of our attacks, such as adding plus 2 attack, heal 2 on ourself, shield 1, or muddle and poison on our attacks. These abilities are not losses either, but return to our discard when another Augment is played, or when we choose to deactivate them. These Augments can be extremely powerful, though one of these stands high above the others, being OP at level 1 and pretty much all the way through to level 9. So with that said, let's jump over to the cards and talk about them in more detail. Gnawing Horde is our first card, and its top summons the Rat Swarm. This summons has a 6 HP, 1 move, and 2 attack, along with poison on all its attacks. At first glance, this one looks great with its higher HP value and poison attack, but with only 1 move, this summons will often get left in the dust and not be useful outside of the first couple of turns it is played. The bottom of this card is a move 4 though, which will come in handy as Mind Thief doesn't have a lot of mobility. The initiative also is great at 82, allowing us to go late and strike without getting attacked ourselves in the same turn. Next is Submissive Affliction. The top of this one is an attack 2, but we add plus 1 attack for each negative condition on the target and gain 1 XP. If your party is throwing around a lot of status effects, this one can be pretty useful. The bottom will allow us to force an enemy within range 5 to attack 2 at range plus 0 on another enemy with us controlling the action. The range plus 0 here just means that if the enemy we are controlling has range, it will use its range for the attack. If not, then the attack will be a melee attack. Abilities like this can be particularly useful when we have an enemy attack another that has retaliate, because we can cause them both to take damage in this case. The initiative here is a 48, which is a rare case of bad initiative value for the Mind Thief. Next up is Into the Night. The top is a loot 1 and activate dark, which as I've mentioned in a previous guide, loot abilities on top actions are easier to use since you can move and use these on the same turn. The bottom here though is what you'll really want to use this card for most of the time. It allows us to go invisible, which will last until the end of our next turn. We can use this card to stay safely in melee range for our next turn to get off another attack before moving away again. Also, this ability will pair well with Scurry, which we'll come to in just a bit. The initiative is also really good at 14, meaning you can usually beat the monsters with it. Now we come to Fearsome Blade. The top ability is an attack 2 with push 3 and gain 1 XP. This attack is actually deceptively good when conditions are right. If the map we're on has traps on it, a push 3 makes it very easy to force enemies onto traps, or even multiple traps. Also, in the case of monsters with less movement, like living corpses, this push may be enough to get us out of their range as well. The bottom is a move 4, attack 2, gain 2 XP for a loss. This can come in handy for a quick move and some burst damage, but it's probably better saved to use near the end of a scenario as we'll want to be careful with our burns having only 10 cards to start. The initiative is a 27, which isn't the fastest, but could still help us beat some slower monsters. And now we come to our first Augment ability, with Feedback Loop. The top is our Augment, allowing us to gain 1 shield for the current round when we use a melee attack. The card itself will also allow us to attack for 1 and gain 1 XP. As I mentioned earlier, this is an active card and will continue to give us its bonus until we deactivate it or use another Augment card. The Shield 1 when we attack does sound good, but there is one Augment that hands down beats all the rest, so I've never actually used this one. That said, the bottom ability is a move 4 with Jump, and we can muddle every enemy move through if we end in the same space we started in. However, I typically just use this for the move 4 and Jump, 
since this ability and the move on Gnawing Horde are the Mind Thief's only move for abilities that aren't lost cards. Plus, the jump can really come in handy. The initiative is a 79, another good number for going late. This next card is the OP Augment. The Mind's Weakness top will add plus 2 attack to all our melee attacks. Using the card initially, therefore, will grant us attack 3 and gain 1 XP, as we get the plus 2 attack immediately to add to the card's attack 1. This augment is really the only one we should use, as even our basic attack 2s become attack 4s. We can do so much damage with this augment that at early levels we can often just kill enemies before they have a chance to attack us, especially if an ally has already hit them. The bottom of the card is a pretty nice one as it has a bottom attack ability with attack 1 and wound, though it is the bottom of our plus 2 attack augment, so we'll probably never use it. The initiative is a 75, making this another good card for going late. Next we have another augment with Parasitic Influence. The augment on this one allows us to heal for 2 on all our melee attacks, and we gain 1 XP when we activate it along with an attack 1. Heal 2 is nice, but if we use this instead of our plus 2 attack from the Mind's Weakness, we will greatly reduce our damage output. I suppose if we're really desperate for some heals we could switch this augment in, but to get the heal we'd have to attack an enemy for 1, which will do pretty much nothing to them, and then we'll just get hit for 2 or more, completely negating the healing we just did. The bottom ability on this card will allow us to force one enemy within range 4 to move 1. If we can move an enemy onto a trap, this could be quite useful, but otherwise, moving an enemy one usually isn't going to do anything for us. The initiative is another late one at 71. Now we come to Scurry. This card is a staple as the top will allow us to move three and then attack for one. If we are using our attack augment, this becomes attack three. The combination of Scurry top and then into the night bottom can allow us to move in early on a turn, attack, and then go invisible. Combined with some Boots of Striding for the plus 2 move, this combo is usually my go-to for going into a new room. The bottom of Scurry is a loot 2 and gain 2 XP, but it's also a loss ability. Another good one to use late to grab up a bunch of loot if you need to outfit your Mind Thief still or upgrade its equipment. The initiative is still a decent lower number at 20, allowing us to beat a good many monster initiatives. Next up we have Perverse Edge. This is essentially a buffed up version of Submissive Affliction, giving us an attack 3, but adding plus 2 attack and 1 XP for each negative condition on the target, but it's also a loss ability. We could get an attack 7, 9, or even higher out of this when combined with our damage augment, but we'll probably want to save this one for its bottom ability. The bottom is an attack 1, range 2, stun, activate frost, and gain 1 XP, and is not a loss. A ranged stun is very useful in itself as we saw with the Tinkerer, but we also get an attack 1 and activate ice, which can be used on another card, the ice that is, to stun on the next turn. Essentially we can stun lock an enemy for a couple of turns or even more if we use a stamina potion to get this card back. We should note here though that our augments only apply to melee attacks so we won't be getting their benefits on ranged attacks like this one. The initiative on this one though is great at 8 allowing us to get this stun off before the enemies get their turn. Empathetic Assault is our last level 1 card. The top of this one is an attack 4, range 5, disarm, activate ice, and gain 2 XP for a loss. Even though this is a loss card, it can definitely be worth it, as we don't have a lot of range attacks with Mind Thief, and the range 5 will allow us to reach across rooms. Add to this the Disarm and Ice that we can use to stun with one of our X cards we'll talk about in just a minute, this attack becomes pretty valuable. However, the bottom could arguably be more valuable and is one I find myself using quite a lot. The bottom is a move to heal to on yourself, which is great for getting out of danger and healing at the same time, and other than our augment, this is our only heal at level 1. The initiative is a nice low at 11 for going early too. Alright. Now let's get into the more situational X cards. First up is Withering Claw, that allows us to inflict Muddle and Poison with all of our melee attacks and gives us an attack 1 and 1 XP when we first activate it. Because of the Poison, this is the only other augment at level 1 that you might want to use instead of the Mind's Weakness. I say this because Poison will give our whole team plus 1 attack essentially on the Poison target and may allow us to do more damage overall as a team, though our Mind Thief will be doing less damage themselves. The bottom of this one will immobilize one adjacent enemy and then give us move 3. This can be pretty good for a retreat since we get to immobilize first, though with Mind Thief's lower mobility this card is nice just for the move 3. 
The Initiative is another good late one at 77. I would recommend swapping this one in for Parasitic Influence if we find ourselves needing some more movement. The next X card is Possession. The top grants an adjacent ally an attack 6 and we gain 2 XP for a loss. This can be useful if you are being buddy buddy with the party tank and are adjacent to them a lot, though you might want to wait till your ally is strengthened so they have advantage as burning a card only to miss completely really sucks. The bottom of this card will grant an ally within range 3 a move 4. So again, in the right situation, this could be great for helping an ally catch up or get out of danger. The initiative here isn't anything to get too excited about though at 51. As far as whether to use this card or not, that will mostly come down to party composition and how your party plays. Finally, we have Frigid Apparition. This is another repeatable stun card if we have ice to consume. The top is attack 3, but if we consume ice, we also get stun and 1 XP. As I mentioned just a bit ago, the bottom of Perverse Edge will stun and activate ice, so lining up the top of Frigid Apparition here right after will allow us to stun again on top of doing an attack 5 if we have the Mind's Weakness active. This brings me to another interesting point about the Mind Thief. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, even at level 1, the Mind Thief has enough damage and control abilities to easily win against some tougher foes. The danger for the Mind Thief is getting surrounded as she can't control more than one or two enemies on a turn. Back to the card now though, the bottom of Frigid Apparition is a move 4, stun one adjacent enemy, and gain 1 XP for a loss. This is another situation where using the loss ability isn't worth losing the other side of the card in most cases. Though, again, this can be great in the end of a scenario when finishing off the last room. The initiative is a 29, which is getting a little late to go early, making it of questionable use. Alright, so now we have an idea of how to play the Mind Thief, so let's look at our starting item recommendations. First up, let's pick up the Cloak of Invisibility. Though we can only use it once per scenario, this will come in handy in keeping us safe from enemy attacks and give us some flexibility. Next, we should pick up a Minor Healing Potion to help us with our low health value. Then, we should look at getting the Boots of Striding to help us with the Mind Thief's relatively low mobility. After that, the Poison Dagger and Heater Shield will work great for our hand items. Finally, for our head item, if there are still some Eagle Eye Goggles available, these can be great when using some of our high damage attacks to make sure we don't miss. Otherwise, the Iron Helmet can be great for keeping us from getting wiped by a crit. The Mind Thief is a great class to play if you like a high-risk, high-reward playstyle, or if you really like playing a controller. And though the class has a higher difficulty curve than most of the other starting classes, it's a lot of fun to play once you get the hang of it. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and leave your thoughts and questions in the comments. Stay tuned to the channel as I'll be covering the Jaws of the Lion expansion characters next. Until then, if you want to see more Gloomhaven digital content, check out this video right here. And as always, thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and keep on gaming.